You against Diego Maradona. Ah! <laughs> no, not a lot of people know that, but yeah. Mehmet Djurokovic, Diego Maradona, yeah. on the same pitch playing against each other. Marking him. What was that like? Yeah, look, <laughs> marking Maradona, it's a dream come true, to be quite honest, you know. Yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah we, we really played well that game and uh, drew one all at home and uh, went to Buenos Aires the week later and uh, cop a nine goal and. Uh, out of the World Cup, basically. So uh, what was what was the atmosphere like there? Unbelievable. Yeah. Really. Absolutely. Hostile. You know, I mean, you had 80, 85, 90,000 there in yeah. Buenos Aires, and everyone just jumping, yeah. doing the kangaroo dance. Both sides of supporters. Yeah. One of the Boca Juniors, and one of the real uh, River Plate uh, supporters, yeah. all jumping up and down, doing the kangaroo dance. You couldn't hear nobody talking. Uh, you know, yeah. the way you wanted to speak to the players and all that, yeah. you couldn't hear. They were just making such a big noise. It was. Definitely, unbelievable I was experience. Only, I was only nine years old, but was it deflection? Was it, was it, it was like a cross shot it that deflected, looped over the keeper? Yep, absolutely, Robbie. Just yeah. looped over my head, basically. Oh. And, <laughs> and they do say that Argentinian, God is Argentinian, because yeah. the wind basically pushed the ball into the back of the uh. net. It was just a, like you said, it was a loop deflection, and yeah. the ball went in. And if it wasn't for the wind that was really mm. like swerving around, yeah. the ball would have gone in. Yeah. So, ah, look. It is what it is, and uh, yeah, we didn't make the World Cup. We were speaking before about uh, Tony Cotty talking about the apprenticeships yeah. and stuff like that. You played in Australia, came through the youth systems in Australia in the old National League. Did, what yeah. was your, you know, apprenticeship into football like? Yeah, I, I was quite fortunate, Robbie. We uh, I started my career at Port Melbourne, mm. and with with a fantastic bunch of kids there, and uh, we from under nine to under sixteens, we basically kept uh, the same team. All the way. All the way, yeah. year by year, year by year. And out of that team, we produced something like six Socceroos. Wow. So uh, we had a fantastic junior uh, set up at Port Melbourne and uh, very fortunate to be playing with these, these guys. And uh, we're still best friends at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Crazy. Family, kids are uh, best friends and uh, still keep in contact. But uh, yeah, grew up at Port Melbourne Football mm. Club and then from there went to Brunswick Juventus. Had a career about two years there. We won the championship in. Uh, in 85 with yeah. Brunswick Juventus and then went to South Melbourne, uh, played a, a few years there and then... Won a championship to, there as well? Yeah, we won the 91 championship up there. How so. old is South Melbourne Football Club? 100 uh, years old? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, this guy was close. named in the South Melbourne team of the uh, century. Wow. Uh, For their 100 year celebration. So that's the kind of calibre that this guy possessed as a player. And you're a centre back. <laughs> I was a centre back. Oh, you can, cool, see, huh? you yeah, can see the no, you can see yeah. the height difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. Tell people that didn't see you what were you like as a player. Robbie, elbows just... and knees and I, mean, I remember yeah, slango, look, uh, but he, he often would tell me that if he was marking someone, he'd do, follow him into the change rooms at half time. Oh, so yeah, yeah. he was a tight they, man marker. That came, came from the commentators, but uh, <laughs> yeah, look, uh, you know, my biggest strength was pace. Mm. Uh, like you said, I'm not a tall uh, guy for a String defender, like to be me. quite honest, you know, yeah. but. Uh, uh, I, I had a good uh, sort of uh, uh, a leap uh, for the ball, yeah. um, had good pace and mm. uh, yeah, ba basically I was a good man marker uh, yeah. you know, and that was my, my job. As long as I did my job, uh, the yeah. coach was happy, uh, <laughs> I was happy. So, uh, but yeah, they were fond memories as a player, now as a coach uh, mm. it's totally different. But yeah, uh, yeah uh, fantastic memories as a player. Yeah. What was it like when you first got the call for Australia? Because it was a bit later on. I won't say it was. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got, got my call up. I think I was at 22. Uh, yeah, never forget my first call up and uh, something that uh, you know will cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, Do you remember the phone the kids. call? I mean, how did that go down? Yeah, well, it was uh, Frank Arrock and uh, well, God bless him, he's passed away. And uh, um, Manfred Schaefer was there. Um, so. They called me up and uh, yeah, said, son, you, you, you're in uh, the Socceroo camp and yeah. uh, please pack your bags and, and come, <laughs> come training and uh, see what happens after that, yeah, you know, but uh, yeah, it was something that, you know, uh, as a kid, you, you, you dream of uh, playing for South Melbourne yeah. and you dream of playing for Australia. So yeah, it's something that you could talk to, to your kids and your grandkids and uh, it's, it's just an honour, honour to play and, for Australia basically. And you know? many people might not know, or some people in Australia, that you were one of the oldest Socceroos as well. You're still playing in the national team at 38 I was, Robbie, years yeah, old. I mean, that, that's a <laughs> pretty good achievement. I, I, I got my call up, it was uh, the Confederation Cup yeah. and most of the players from Europe couldn't come. Yeah. So they used the local based players yeah. from Australia and 
I was 37 and a half and got a call up and uh, yeah, we're playing in the Confederation Cup and I scored a goal who, who in we the playing last against? minute. We were playing against New Zealand. Oh, okay, well. So uh, yeah, very fortunate, but uh, I was very fortunate in football that I never got a lot of uh, injuries, yeah. uh, main injuries, you know, mm. the way I'm built, I suppose, uh, yeah. makes it for, um, for, for a person or a player not to, to get injured so much, basically. Yeah. Right? Akaz over here, Rob, you've got to ask one final question. Mm. I know you want to end it on a positive because yeah. I'm a fan of yours, uh -huh. but this man has a very soft spot for you <laughs> and I, I think I'm going to let him do this. Uh, no, just absolute pleasure to have you on the show. It's like a getting emotional. Thank yeah. you, Robbie. Look, uh, to be quite honest, this guy's done a fantastic job. Uh, he, he's a great person. Uh, he's a great player. He's, his family is he's, he's, uh, he's number one and uh, as a coach and as a person, it's honor, honestly a pleasure to meet you, big man. You've been fantastic. So good luck, go. with <laughs> good luck with everything. Thanks, good luck. Good luck. I can't believe you're crying. <laughs> he cried when he yeah. found out that he had to work with me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was a good thing about thing. Yeah. But Mehmet, uh, my cousin, uh, Thank you. he's now living in England. He's the reason why I'm a Salango fan. I mean, I was born here, but he brought me to see you play. And I know for a fact that if I send him the picture with you, He'll be jumping up and down because he was a massive fan. And uh, like Robbie said, thanks for everything. Thank you, thank you. Thanks, and, thank you for being yourself. My pleasure. Thank you very much. All, right. thank. All the thanks, best, buddy. Robbie. We'll see you soon. All, All the right. best, big fella. All the best. Thanks, mate. Thanks, man. Wow. Just a minute. I'll lock to you for you to tear up. Are you okay? He's still filming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't slip, it's wet.